Hello friends, my name is Andy, you're watching What Culture Wrestling. It is currently bullshit o'clock in the morning and I feel like an absolute zombie after staying up all night for SummerSlam, but don't worry, the content cow is here and we're gonna milk it. Now last night's pay-per-view spawned a number of controversial booking decisions, but regardless of what you think of the show as a whole, at least WWE took a bunch of risks and Raw and SmackDown both feel suitably shaken up as a result. And with nine championships on the line throughout the course of the evening, there were always going to be some major changes. WWE pulled four in total, bringing several shifts in some of the most important divisions. So let's run through them, and we'll begin with the main card opener in which Seth Rollins defeated Dolph Ziggler to become a two-time Intercontinental Champion. What started off as a relatively slow, methodical encounter gradually built to something a lot more exciting, and it was highlighted by an awesome spot in which Rollins reversed super play Dolph Ziggler off the top rope, then picked him up, rolled straight into a falcon arrow for a close near fall. Dean Ambrose and Drew McIntyre were both ringside, but WWE did a good job of utilising them without actually taking away from the match itself. Yeah, they did get involved, but it was never distracting and it played into the finish quite nicely. Dean battered Drew on the outside, allowing Rollins to take advantage, hitting Ziggler with a super kick and then the stomp. Boom, one, two, three two-time champion. This second title change of the night came in the SmackDown Women's Championship Triple Threat match as Charlotte Flair pinned her best friend Becky Lynch to secure what feels like the 72nd title reign of her WWE career. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but she's super decorated and earned another accolade last night, as when Becky had Carmella trapped in the disarmor, seemingly with victory on the brink, Charlotte appeared out of nowhere, hit her with the natural selection, and scored the victory. A great finish on the back of a relative average match, but it's the post-match that'll really get people talking as Becky appeared to turn heel, battering her longtime friend all over ringside. This got a huge reaction in the building, but perhaps not in the way WWE would have wanted as Becky was loudly cheered, while Charlotte, who was supposed to be sympathetic, got a chance of you deserved it as she sat there crying her eyes out. But whatever you think of it, it's an exciting new twist in their storyline, and I, for one, can't wait to see what comes next. Number three, and this is a big one, Ronda Rousey submitted Alexa Bliss to become Raw Women's Champion. The biggest surprise here is that this was essentially a squash match. Bliss barely mustered a sliver of offense. She was basically just f***ing murdered. Rousey again looked like a badass. Bliss tried to evade her early on. This led to Ronda literally turning her back on her opponent and sitting down in the middle of the ring, goading her back inside in a total power move. Plus, we got the awesome visual of Alexa doing that weird twisty dislocate the arm thing she does quite often while locked in an arm submission. And this meant that when she tapped out in just over four minutes, it actually felt warranted. This has got a lot of people talking because Bliss is a popular performer and it was a very un-WWE thing to do, but still, you can't exactly call someone the baddest woman on the planet unless it's reflected in the booking. It certainly was here, and it felt like a big moment. And finally, they've only gone and bloody done it. After what felt like an ice age of diversions, losses, other kinds of nonsense, Roman Reigns is finally WWE Universal Champion. He pinned Brock Lesnar in a fast, all-action sprint of a main event that brought flashbacks to Brock's awesome WrestleMania a clash with Goldberg just last year. Now, Braun Strowman had promised to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase on the winner, but he never stood a chance. He was wiped out accidentally by a Roman Reigns suicide dive, and then Braun took control, hitting him with an F5 on the floor, battering him with a chair, and then tossing the briefcase all the way up the ramp. This allowed Roman to score the victory with the spear, and the cash-in never came, leaving the big dog to celebrate as the show hastily went off the air. It was a clever piece of editing from WWE's production team. They knew that if they lingered on Reigns, then the jeers would get mighty mightier and mightier, so they rushed through the whole thing, they didn't stay on him for too long, and they cut things off before it could get too negative. The match itself was bags of fun, and hey, regardless of what you think of Roman Reigns, at least Brock Lesnar's universal title reign is finally over. Anyway guys, that's it for our rundown. Be sure to head down to the comments section right now and let us know what you think of these title changes, as well as what they mean going forward, and drop your general comments on SummerSlam as a whole down there as well. And once you've done that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and then check out some of the videos currently floating around my head. And once you've done that, head over to whatculture.com forward slash WWE, where you'll find more great weapons-grade content dropping daily. I've been Andy, and I'll see you later.